Hello, people of Earth, and welcome to Largo. Thank you for pressing play. We are live here in the Largo Courtyard, which is one of the most beautiful spots here at Largo. And we have a really fun show for you tonight. Uh, first of all, it's a totally safe show because, as you can tell, we are outdoors. So every month I do this show here at Largo called Hanging with Paul Shear, where we bring actors, writers, musicians, comedians all together to show me their stuff. And so tonight, everybody will be bringing an object. I don't know what that object is. No one else on the panel knows what that object is, and they'll be presenting that object to us, and it's just a jumping off point for a conversation and a lot of fun. Basically, it's like show and tell for adults. And it's been so much fun doing the show, and tonight we're bringing together uh, some of my favorite funny people. Uh, Patty Harrison, who you might know from Hulu Shrill, uh, Mitra Juhari from Three Busy Debras on Adult Swim, and Whitmer Thomas, who has an amazing HBO special called The Golden One. They'll all be joining us, and at the end of the show, uh, Wit is going to do some songs. So let's uh, get to it. Paul and Mitra and Patty, too. 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 Paul and Mitra and Patty too. Paul and Mitra and Patty too. Paul and Mitra too. And Patty. <laughs> so you think that's enough of this? Okay. All right. So welcome everybody. I'm so excited that you are here. And to kick us off, uh, I am going to show you something that I brought here today, which is these two hats. Um, and I'll just show you these right here so you can get a good look at it. This is a, a bear hat. Mm -hmm. And this is a, uh, a raccoon hat. Now, um, I got these two hats because I went to essentially a nicer version of what exists in the Tiger King this past week in Arizona. I went to a place where they house uh, stray coyotes and wolves. And um, we went there with our kids because we were like, oh, this is outdoor activity. We can give them like, something to see and we wear masks. We'll be socially distant. And we were the only people there yes. to see these <laughs> things. And <laughs> at the end of the tour, they're like, would you like to come in the gift shop? But we were the only people there. So I felt this incredible pressure to buy something and nothing was there that I would ever want. <laughs> and then... Not only did I buy one hat, but I bought and, them both. And tags are still on. St oh, yeah. Tags, are, <laughs> tags will always stay on these hats. I don't think there will ever be a day where I'll be like, I got to slap on this bear hat. I think it's really cute. I like I think they're really cool. <laughs> both of them. Well, now, now, you're, now you're opening up my eyes to it. Maybe. The raccoon one's amazing. I feel, me and Mitra have two cowboy hats for the exact same reason. <laughs> It's like that peer pressure. Like it, I felt the peer pressure. Like I had a great time at this animal sanctuary. There were lovely people, but then I was like, now I do. Like I've already paid to be here, but now I felt like I needed to like, I don't know, buy more stuff. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, we we yeah, we've done that. We've been there. A ranch, and uh, we're in the gift shop, and felt pressured into buying cowboy hats, and now just own cowboy hats. Mm -hmm. Do you? Would you? Have you ever worn them out? We wore them when we were there to be like, we did it. And it yeah. felt really cool. But then I keep putting it on and then not leaving my house with it on because it. I just like don't. It's going to sound crazy, but I don't really have the energy of like someone who can wear a cowboy hat. <laughs> to me, you put off cowboy. <laughs> it is a, it is a large, you really have to commit to a personality that you are wearing a cowboy hat. I have like too much anxiety based neck pain to be able to like wear a cowboy <laughs> hat. <laughs> my stepfather... Uh, growing up was a big cowboy hat wearing person. Like we had like a, a coat rack for cowboy hats in our house <laughs> that felt like uh, it felt cool to me. I was like, one day I aspire to have a, a coat rack for cowboy hats. Uh, I think but, a stepdad can always wear a cowboy hat. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's the way you get respect they from your kids. They can have kids. a cowboy hat and they can have a water bed and it's all right. <laughs> It's kind of you get one big enough. It's kind of a threat because it's like if you're bad, I'm gonna put you up inside the hat. <laughs> you can put them literally. Yeah, you gotta yeah. put them in a take a ten gallon hat. You yeah. have to live in that hat. Yeah, everybody's biggest thing. fear is getting stuck inside a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, since I was a kid, it's like I don't want to disappear inside that hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like the human equivalent of like a turtle shell. I feel like <laughs> to a certain degree. But yeah, this um, 
going to this place, this animal sanctuary, also while amazing, being like one person on a tour is also incredibly an uncomfortable situation for me to be in. Like, it's like you're there and you have to give way more. It's almost like, can we just not do this? Like, you know, and you're like, it's like they're doing their full show for you a little bit. Yeah. Anytime I'm on like a tour type anything, I feel like I'm always the person who's like, Mm-hmm, because I feel bad that, like, the tour guide isn't getting affirmation. Oh, yeah, asking questions. Ask but questions. Being, for me, I'm too bad at improv to think of a good question. So they'll be like, and that's why this is here. And I go, so that's uh, that's why, why is that there? And they just sit, retell the story again. But do you think that that feeling of, like, anxiety or hesitation from you comes from being a performer in the sense that, like, if you were – as doing stand up and like two people came to the show, you'd be like, Oh, I'm performing for you versus like I, if they don't get a lot of people anyways, maybe they're really happy and excited to give you the whole. Yeah. I think spiel. my thing is like, I feel like I have to be overly like, y like what you were saying, like asking questions and be like, really, what kind of animal is that? And how did you like, Oh, so like, you don't like to give back. I don't, they're like giving you everything and you don't want to <laughs> give anything at all. I feel like now I have to give, I feel like I have to bring my part of the bargain where I would probably normally more hang back, enjoy the show and, and see it. But now I feel like I got to laugh a little louder. I have to really ask a question of follow up. Yeah. Well, that's why you buy the hat and then you wear it really low. So they know that you don't really want to <laughs> talk a lot. It's like, you're an obvious fan. I'm of the, a, of the okay. sanctuary. You've got the hat. I got the, the animal you want to see is on the hat. Just the You're raccoon. Yeah, I'm. I'm a big fan of the raccoon. You keep bring going. Me the when are we gonna? Um. All right. So wh who else has brought something here today? Anybody bring anything uh, that they want to show off, talk about? Um. I didn't bring a physical thing, but I okay. have photos. Okay. Great. So, so we will. Maybe should I? I can show you the photos on my phone. Yeah, or should great. We just That's great. Okay. So these are weapons that I have at home in Ohio. Wait, so you have, like, what kind of weapons are those? <laughs> like, are they ninja? I mean, this is like, 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 what kind of, like, weapons are they? Right. So, well, so the one I'm holding in the one picture is a Naginata. Okay. And then there's the other picture. There are commas, which is like the sickle blade. And then size are the big daggers. And then there was also in that picture bulletproof plating and a pair of like moon boots. <laughs> that It was just like a bunch of stuff at the time. I This was a couple years ago. I'd like gone home and I just assumed my mom would have thrown... A yeah, lot of my your out. weapons away. Yeah, but she kept all. I think it's because she doesn't know how to dispose of them. <laughs> but, but it's like, but you also are kind of creating a John Wick scenario for yourself, where if something was to go bad, you go back home to Ohio, you pop up on your cases, and you get your weapons out. Yeah, I really thought that, and that was. Uh, I really was planning for that at some point. I think. How old I, were you when you got these weapons? I think the first. I have a bunch of more weapons at home, and they're all in a big green like laundry basket. Are they real weapons? Like, are they pointy? Like they're real weapons, and they're really shittily made. They're like from a flea market, okay. or like there's like, uh, I think it was called. There was this catalog called like Bud Press. Big Bud Press. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I also am just like, I'm also I'm, loving I'm the idea it. of like uh, flea market, ch like Chinese stars <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. Big uh, Bud Press, like, like, <laughs> like lime green. Yeah. <laughs> Big Bud, yeah. Hand painted <laughs> overall. Comes with a backpack. <laughs> um, Big flower, a sort of a big, is a silly daisy painted on it. Gorgeous <laughs> sheep <laughs> made of canvas. Little, yeah. <laughs> Little like pizza and hot dogs painted all over it. <laughs> um, wait, wait. So wait, but what was the goal of these weapons? Were you like training, or were you just having them to be like, I need this as decoration? Like, what does the weapon serve for you? Well, I think I when I was, I think the first time I got a sword, or like a real sword, I was like eleven or twelve. Okay, and uh, I was just really into like martial arts movies and I th and like anime and video games and I think I felt 
really I was always really unathletic and okay. like more creative and um and I re- but I really was like into this idea of like I would that I would be an assassin <laughs> like that wh- I would I there were like until what age yeah probably like 13 was I That's still about saying I could see myself if I was forced by necessity I could see myself being able to kill someone for money <laughs> if, <laughs> if they were bad a couple maybe once or twice you've done on your instagram stories where you're just going through your closet <laughs> of like your childhood stuff and it is the most it should be an entire tv show just i mean like, yeah your drawings were amazing i remember seeing your drawings one time when you were going through instagram like just like there was like you were you were amazing you are i guess you are still an amazing artist not that that, that went away but i feel like you definitely had like so at least when I remember, like some very like Mortal Kombat inspired kind of drawings too. Yeah, thank thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, I was never really into Mortal Kombat. Okay. Uh, I was. <laughs> uh, I just I thought the character design wasn't that great, uh, <laughs> to, to be honest. And I thought it was kind of like just uh, uh, a messy Americanized ma- mess sure. of Asian culture uh, that just like felt inauthentic to me. Yeah, and the well, way that like yeah. games like you know Tekken or something <laughs> I thought honored um but yeah I drew I have like a lot I felt way more creative and I think I had a lot of like I was always really passive and not aggressive and I think uh a lot of that manifested in me drawing a lot of like s- really slutty violent women <laughs> and then uh fantasizing about killing people for money with wep- with blades and not gun I didn't re- I wasn't really interested in guns until like high school. <laughs> and then where did that fascination did that end or you, st- are you I really was into guns and I wanted to design guns. I was like super I was super into like Resident Evil as like a kid yeah. and then that transitioned into me wanting to design video games and then I was like, well, if I design vi- guns for video games, I should just try and design a gun in real life. And I like that you would have like designer guns. Like I love that that would be like it's a great like it's it's a creative way of like embracing a gun culture. It's like really nice. Yeah, I mean there there aren't a lot of trans women that are you know having their voices lifted in gun design right now. Which can sucks. you tell me like one of your guns like like one of your features on one of your like design guns that you remember like. Um, it was always about like muzzle climb. Like it was like a weird stock, so the the muzzle wouldn't <laughs> climb if it was like firing auto, or like <laughs> it would like have a stock that went behind, and there'd be like kind of a little like bladed part, so you could like. <laughs> <laughs> st- like All right, so I I was gonna ask like, did you have a fantasy of how one of your assassinations would play out? Like as someone's Ooh. coming to you, like one of the guys in the opposing group of bad guys did you have like a a dream situation of how yeah. you would like i knew that i really wanted to learn how to like hurricane rana someone wait what in does a that fight. mean it's a wrestling move but it's in a lot of like martial arts movies where someone jumps and wraps their legs around someone's head and flips backwards and slams their head on the ground i might be like saying it incorrectly but i always wanted to do that to someone and then like but smash their head on like the ground <laughs> mm. like flips so hard it just like smashes <laughs> like, like, a, like a watermelon like a Gallagher style water yeah wow this is amazing cool. I love this side of you that I didn't really feel like I knew this is great yeah thank you <laughs> All right, who else has something uh, they want to show I can go alright great um, I have an autographed copy of Alan Alda's book oh this is <laughs> great and it's called if I understood you would I have this look on my face and he's going <laughs> which I, it doesn't seem like he's totally confused he seems like he's <laughs> no he's poised <laughs> he's just kind um, of always like, i don't know about that <laughs> i love him so much um, how do you Mitra get into alan alda crying talking about alan <laughs> really <laughs> wait but how do you like it? like what like what um, brings I'm you i'm a to huge mash fan really um yes yeah, so i grew up watching mash um with my grandpa on my mom's side and have seen every episode multiple times um i like i get a lot of gifts uh, this was from Alyssa stonaha she got it for me um and like Wick got me a thing of Alan Alda when I left a job. I, my, my bosses or like all the writers when I was the writer's assistant at Full Frontal gave me 
all of the seasons of MASH on DVD for Christmas and a DVD player because I didn't have a DVD player. Oh, <laughs> my God. And then when I left, they photoshopped me and Alan Alda getting married, which is not what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> so Alan Alda is your your favorite MASH character. Um, I love Hawkeye. I would say that... Um, he is not my favorite oh. character. Oh, or maybe he is. Like, I love him. Okay. Um, oh, so you love Alan Alda outside of well, the... Well, I, I love him mostly because of MASH. But then okay. it's, like, nice that he, like, cares about science also. And, like, I saw him in Oh, Hello also. Yeah. Um, John Daly was going, and he knew that I'm a huge... <laughs> Alan Alda head so he took me and we sat like a couple rows behind Alan Alda and he did a cartwheel before we went on stage and when I realized that we'd been sitting <laughs> like two oh rows behind him the whole time I started crying and I don't remember anything else about the show <laughs> with, with love to Nick yes. and all that <laughs> but I don't remember anything else except for Alan Alda being so close by with his wife and he did a cartwheel yeah it was awesome <laughs> he did a cartwheel he did a cartwheel he he's like literally 90 years did old. a cartwheel and this was when it was on Broadway was not that long ago yeah um, it was amazing and I got what to go the? backstage and meet him and I was too shy to ask for a picture because I completely blacked out but that is like I have a weird Alan Alda story is it bad it's not bad I it was bad to me but now that I look at it I think it's okay I'll tell you what it is so okay you can judge it and I because I don't even know how I feel about it so my <laughs> so it's trauma <laughs> <laughs> my gra like my grandparents um lived out in the Hamptons before the Hamptons were cool or anything like that. It was like just, yeah, it was nothing. Um, and they were shooting a movie out there called sweet Liberty, which was an Alan Alda movie where he's like an actor doing a movie about like 1776 or something like that's the premise in some way. And so we were having lunch, uh, my grandma and I, and she sees Alan Alda across the restaurant and she's like, you need to go over there and you need to ask for his autograph. Now I'm like, <laughs> eight or nine like and did you I'm, care no i mean like she's like you know who he is he's from mash but my experience with mash was it was what my grandparents watched with me and i didn't like it it was like oh when can different strokes start like when is silver spoons going on like i wanted that like that was it felt like i had to just wade through that to get to my show like when the jeffersons are going to happen and uh and so she sent me over there i shyly walked over to his table while he was eating i feel like when i think back to the story he did have a, a, a mouthful of food, but I was young. So again, I'm, I'm not like even a teen. I'm just like eight. Um, and I'm like, uh, hi, can I have your autograph? And he looked me up and down and he said, you have no idea who I am. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and then <laughs> sent me away from the table. <laughs> and I went back autographless. Oh, man. Like, so I look at it now and I go... Okay, <laughs> he's right. He, he, like, and he was like, someone's sending you over here. So there is something that I appreciate to like his level of, you know, he wasn't outwardly mean. He just was like, you no, don't want mean. this. <laughs> no, <laughs> I neither. mean, I think he's that's, nice. I think he's being good because he's ultimately pushing the onus of teaching the lesson um, that he needs to learn about his parents <laughs> uh, on them that they should not be using their children as an instrument yes. uh, to gain things in our society. He's saying uh, like, he's like, you want my autograph? You get your asses over here and you get my autograph. Like, yeah, there's no, like, I had no connection to that autograph. I yeah, never... I'm sure there's like 10 kids came up to him that day with like someone <laughs> never... like in the corner. <laughs> just like, yeah. He's just... sick of it. He's sick of kids, people sending their I kids. I will say though, how hard is it to send away a kid and do, like to say no to a little kid is... Like then, I, I, now mean, I haven't really looked at it. Icon. Like <laughs> <laughs> so what did you bring? Uh, what did you bring here? Yes. Well, speaking of talking to celebrities, I was moved here when I was a teenager, 18, didn't know anybody and wanted to be an actor, comedian, whatever. And uh, I w carried DVDs around with me and would give them to people. Uh, gave one to Fred Armisen one time. Wow. I thought it was a CD. Um, because so embarrassing. So isn't like kind of like you were like trying to like, <laughs> like is it your real? Oh, was it your real or is it a short movie? It was movie? sketches. Oh, a bunch sketches. of sketches that me and my friend had made. Um, I gave one to you one yeah. time, and you emailed me and told me, or you DM'd me. I had like DM'd you on yeah. Facebook. It was a long time ago, and you were like, 
my computer got stolen and your DVD was inside of it. I, it, that is probably the truth. My computer did get stolen. We <laughs> rented a house one time and our whole entire house was, yeah. everything was stolen from our house. And then you said, could you bring another one to me at, <laughs> yeah, you see at MySpace or something like that? That's weird. I yeah. sent you my reel last year and shut you up, said shut your, mouth. Mm, your shut reel your was in my <laughs> computer yeah, was and lost. everything was, was yeah, stolen yeah, yeah, from yeah, my yeah. house. <laughs> another house. It was another... Uh, <laughs> I don't uh, commit insurance fraud or anything. <laughs> um, but I would email Zach Galifianakis. I would write him letters. Oh, wow. All the time because he lived in my neighborhood and I had, I had found out that he lived in my neighborhood. So <laughs> I, like, oh, so like handwritten letters. I would write him letters and then I would email him from, to his fan, or to his like website. Wow. And um, it is em- very embarrassing. You know, I was 18. Yeah. It was f- 15 years ago or something. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It was before Zach was super famous. Um, but I would email him begging him to be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. This is great. Uh, it's so I just brought one of them and I, thought, go you know, ahead, I could please. Read this is a couple lines from it. Oh, I want to hear as much as I as much as you'd like and to give us. This is me as an eighteen year old thinking that I'm like very funny and could potentially, you know, write a great movie for him. Or something By the like way, that. totally acceptable at eighteen. Like I mean, like we are all making this is this is a yeah. So feel no guilt on this. Uh, I can't wait to hear it though. Yeah, uh, and my writing. This is me also like thinking that I'm like an intellectual as well. Okay, uh, <laughs> dear Zach G. Right. Oh, uh, right <laughs> off the bat, probably didn't know how to spell his last name. I have recently moved to Santa Monica from Alabama to do what else but act. <laughs> I seem to be having the same lonely problem as you. Oh, I, I saw him do stand up and he talked about being lonely. Okay. I think oh. at the old Largo, maybe. Um, I don't have any friends. <laughs> so oh, I drink no. cream soda in my room all day and eventually fall asleep. Every now and again, uh, I have a dream, but then I, or I have a bad dream, and then I w- I'll wake up to Carson Daly's talk show. Then I realize it was not a dr- dream at all. <laughs> I often this sounds like a, like he like you're going to murder. This is like your yeah. stand letter to like Eminem. Yeah, yeah, it's very it's <laughs> sad. It's creepy. Uh, I often wake up the next morning and think about home and how uh, cool it was to jump off high things into water whenever I felt like it. L.A. is dumb. I met two guys who are actors and realized that Hollywood is like like you said high school. So I guess I took a lot in from like whenever I saw him do stand up. Uh, they took me to club, to a club, um, and I couldn't help but look at all the other people having dry sex in the center of the room. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Slut shaming. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there is a crowd of kids wearing mohawks and leather jackets standing beside the House of Blues. As I walked by them, they all commented on my sweater, and they were yelling at me, saying, "Hey, Christian Slater, nice sweater." I found it strange because I don't look like Christian Slater. My sweater it was nice, though. Like, I'm imagining him reading this and going, this kid has got the goods. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so here's where I really get on a pedestal. I wanted to yell back that they were just contradicting what they're trying to stand for, but I didn't. I don't know what that means. And I spelled didn't with three Ds. Wow. Um, where are they? Where are the Ds? Uh, D I D D N T. Oh wow! Yeah, which I'm pretty sure I I only recently stopped that. Um, <laughs> and then I, I try to break to ta- up with him. Every day. <laughs> yeah. I then I try. You know, I talk about how he has a cool beard, and I wish I could have a beard and stuff. And I I, I try to tell him a a joke for stand up. Yeah. That I I remember thinking this was really funny. And now I'm re- I read it before I came here, and it doesn't make any sense. But so here's like the entire joke, which is, um, okay, whenever I order a sandwich from a sandwich place, I always ask for it plain. I say, can I have it ham and turkey on white bread? They always reply with, yeah, what kind of cheese do you want? And then I say, none, thank you. And then they say in the most confused voice, wait a second, you just want it dry? But for some reason, it doesn't sound like they're saying dry. It sounds like they're saying dwy. It annoys me. Why do they have to make things more difficult? I usually reply with the question, uh, w- to their question with, I like to make it easy for you guys. Then they smile and look at me like I'm stupid. I know I'm not stupid. I just don't like condiments. For the rest of my day, that voice saying, Dwy, resonates in my ears. 
Uh, I just thought I'd tell you that because I think it's funny. <laughs> wow. What would you do if you received a letter like this right now? I wouldn't reply to this. <laughs> Did he ever reply to any of these letters? Uh, no. He This one, I think because I was pretty deep into these like letters yeah. of, yeah. I got a letter back from somebody, um, someone named uh, Carney Canarsis. C -c -narsis. It seems like a made up name. Yeah. Um, that down there? Carney Kacknarsis? No, I know them. <laughs> I know them very That's my manager, and I feel really manager. manager. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, thanks for contacting ZachElephantAckis.com. If you're looking for some video on Zach, you may find it here. If you're trying to book Zach, uh, we'll get back to you shortly. Dog Bites Man is available on iTunes, <laughs> but is canceled on Comedy Central. Here's his tour dates. Or, so. Oh, right. So you, that, that seems like it wasn't like a response. It seems like no. that was just a general one back. Yeah. Wow. That's like... Also, like, so bold because you want to be accepted in a way, but it's like, but yeah, wow, that's, that is, and you wrote multiple letters. Oh, uh, yeah, a lot of them. <laughs> a lot. A lot. Oh, for sure. I wrote a lot. Have of you letters. met him afterwards to I've connect? met him a few times now, and I, I don't want to, I would not uh, bring that up unless we became close. Right, right, yeah, because you... <laughs> But, it was, I, but I do wonder if it got through to him. Like at some level, if you said that, it would it trigger like, oh, yeah, before the hangover, I got upwards of like 10 or 15 letters from. Like, right. You because at that point, let's see, that was like 2006. So I don't necessarily know where he was at the fan letter. Right. Territory. So it probably wasn't that many. But I was email. I remember going home from work as an 18 year old in LA not knowing anybody and looking forward to the email that I was going to send Zach that would like get him to be my friend wow <laughs> because I'm like I, my, my thinking was we're two we're both southern and we live in LA and we like hate Hollywood but in reality I wanted to be on entourage and like <laughs> and I, but I, it's all an act <laughs> but uh, yeah man I don't know wow that is that is uh like it's so perfect. I feel like that's it's like, but I also now I'm like so I, I'm so curious about what, like what you do after you get like ten of these because like do you get scared? Like if, if I'm Zach, like I'd be a little scared. I'd be like, hmm. I don't know. I don't. Know. Well, you know, me and we. The way I met you was I d we did a short film that around that same time for some student college thing where like yeah right I remember that and then you were like you st brought me to UCB and. And I saw um, your improv show and then you were like, take classes here or whatever. But then after that, I would still I, I remember emailing you or like sketch ideas or whatever. And you'd be like, oh, oh yeah, that's great or whatever. And eventually started doing comedy and stopped right. doing that. But with Zach, it was like weirdly personal with him. I don't right. know. I it was a very stalker kind of I'll kill you if we become friends. <laughs> um, so, you know, so, you know, to strategically give uplifting and soft responses and that's all kind of a self-preservation thing so you don't get shot in the head basically i'm trying to pre yeah prevent myself from getting shot or stabbed uh shivved uh, things of that <laughs> nature yeah you know yeah. wild dogs being r released on me and things like that no it's a, it's a it's a weird thing because i feel like i when i was a kid i would write tons of fan letters like tons of fan letters and and getting something back or hearing like uh, connections because like, like I feel like a lot of the times it just is like it just evaporates into like the ether, right? And I feel like oh, if I'm like if someone is writing to me or doing something, I want to at least acknowledge that like you know that it's that it was received on some level. Yeah, I guess it's a lot different now with social media. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, way more. You can just DM somebody or, or even at them, and sometimes yeah. they respond. But I mean, in yeah, like it's like, have you ever, like, I got into a weird thing where, uh, like, I mean, I, I had a weird situation because I before Joss Whedon was kind of out as being this person that's not somebody to be a, a huge fan of. Uh, uh, 
like I was obsessed with Joss Whedon and I was doing this like documentary like who would you like to still protecting him and (laughs) and how you introduced him I see (laughs) I said before I was protecting myself I (laughs) I went back I love Joss Whedon (laughs) I don't care what Ray Ray Fisher says I'm all team Whedon Uh, I don't care what his ex-wife says I'm team Whedon no I I, (laughs) this is before like his ex-wife was like revealed him to be who he is and multiple other people um I was like, oh, if I was at Comic Con, I would love to meet Joss Whedon. That would be like my dream. Like I thought he was so great. And then I was at this party, and I felt like a tap, tap, tap on my shoulder. And he's like, "Hi, heard your dream was to meet me." Oh. And I was like, ah, uh, oh. And I didn't know what it was. I, first of all, I was like, I was tapped on the shoulder. So I turned around. It took me a second to facially put together what was going on then i did and then i was like wait what are you saying then i had to remember that i did this documentary like six months beforehand and then it was this awkward i had nothing to say i was like oh yeah i'm just <laughs> yeah i mean it, i guess yeah, the, you know like then like devaluing what i said like i didn't really want to meet you. i just said it in the dark i mean my, <laughs> you know and then it was like but then it was just this awkward moment of us just like standing there and like cool well uh, it's great to, to meet you and then walk and then just a walk away of like and at that point it was like somebody that was like if I go work with Joss Whedon it would be the best yeah. Be a, like, and just totally ate shit and blew it well it's like it's that's such a weird th- on the spot moment that it's like of course you wouldn't have that like perfect yeah and, and also so sultry yeah, it was very sultry. Hey, looking hey, you for me, to... big guy. Oh, <laughs> was... like, it sounds like he was soliciting sex. I mean, we did have sex. And? and It, it was, was all... great. Okay, so why are you complaining <laughs> on record? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. You all were fantastic. Um, and now we're going to turn over the show to Whitmer, who has some songs for us. So, uh, Whitmer, take it away. All right. This one is a true story about the first time I ever did more than um, kiss with a girl. It's a true story. When I was a teen I took my girl to the beach We kissed under a blanket as the sun went down She sucked on my neck And I touched her breast Then her hand crawled up my billabong board shorts Or maybe they were Vulcan This is the best night of my life I said as she tickled my inner thigh I said, you are out She said, I haven't even started yet She started to graze My shaft and balls and taint And I immediately came I looked her in her pretty eyes and profusely apologized. She said, for what? Why? At that moment, I realized that I could see both of the hands. I lifted up the blanket and outran the tiniest little sand crab. A crab covered in my comb, crab covered in comb, a crab covered in my comb, crab covered in comb, crab covered in my comb, crab covered in comb, crab covered in my comb, in my billabong board shorts, or maybe they were Vulcan, they could have been rib curl, or maybe they were Quicksilver. Let's be honest, they were mossy no. And that's real. <laughs> and this next one is I don't know. It'll you know, imagine I'm doing comedy in between these doing stand up, there's a packed house. 
Um, and so, you know, this is something else. I don't, I don't actually have any idea what this is. Do you people love me like I love them? Cry a river and go for a swim I eat fast food when I feel sad And think of everyone I know who's died, who's died Everyone I know who's died And do the things that I do still come off as cute If I say what I want, will it seem rude? Cause I feel so zonked and I can't stand still Got bait in a bucket but nothing to kill, to kill There's nothing to kill I got no stories left in my back pocket Cause I mined my youth and exhausted it And my writing's gotten stiff like my crooked limbs Maybe I settle down and have a couple of kids Some kids, two kids, that'll do the trick and I try so hard not to complain So I look at my phone and say nothing I wanna cheer you up if you ain't feeling swell I got a little book of jokes to tell To tell Some jokes To tell To tell Some jokes To tell Alright I'm too punctual to ever be cool The oldest guy at the spot I'm such a tool Do I love my lover like they love me? And if I'm always there Will it get boring, boring, boring? I don't wanna be boring And so I'm half good at some things But my body's out of whack I won't lift you up But I'll throw out my back Ow. You know I feel so alone Cause I'm a one trick pony And I ain't got a home No home No home No home And so I cry, cry, cry When I'm in my car And beep, beep, beep Goes my clever heart And pump, pump, pump The brakes on this dance If you really knew me Would you give me a chance, a chance a chance, give me a chance Alright, I wanna lift you up When you ain't feeling swell So I got a little book Of jokes to tell I wanna cheer you up When you ain't feeling swell so I got a little book of oh, jokes to tell I wanna cheer you up when you ain't feeling swell So I got a little book of oh, jokes to tell To tell some jokes To tell To tell some jobs to do. Thank you for tuning in, watching it on your computer or wherever you are. Make sure you get out there and vote. I know the big election is an easy decision for most people, but definitely look in your local elections, your races, your bills, your judges. All those things are so important. They affect your life in a major, major way and often go uh, neglected. So make sure you know who you're voting for and uh, what they stand for. Thank you so much. And uh, make sure that you stay tuned to Largo to see amazing shows, hopefully like this. Mm -hmm.